Um, today we're going to talk um, about finding the ideal SaaS property project. So uh, we're going to touch on SaaS, very, very brief overview. I'm sure a lot of people that are listening to this are, are used to SaaS uh, and have experience with SaaS. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the ways, um, probably the biggest hurdle really that we come across when we're meeting investors. Uh, we meet a lot of people um, at networking events, and people who come along to um, our offices um, to meet us, and they are looking for either a project or a property to hold on for slightly longer term. So we thought it'd be good to take this opportunity to put together uh, a webinar on some of the tips that we do and um, you know, some, some of the ideas and, and uh, approaches that we, we utilize as well as a business. So uh, we're going to jump into it very, very shortly. I can see there's a few more people still joining on board. Thank you very much, guys. Nice to have everybody. Hope everybody's well and safe. I um, can see a few names there that we know as well. So it's good to see everybody jumping on. Thank you for your time. Excellent. So one minute past, so I think that's fair enough. There's a couple of more people just joined in. Hi, guys. Um, so, yeah, so we'll jump into this then. Uh, first of all, before we start, we've done this with uh, every webinar. It's just an opportunity really for us uh, as a business to thank all the NHS and key workers that are out there. Um, they're doing a fantastic job. I'm sure everybody will agree. Um, so it's just a chance really for us to to say thank you. Um, you know, we appreciate all the work everybody's doing. I'm sure in these unusual and strange times, everybody will echo that as well. So um, I mentioned very briefly um, that today's webinar is all about how to find the perfect SaaS property project. Um, one of the things that we find quite often going around um, networking and meeting um, SaaS investors is that people are looking for a project, people um, typically look at their SaaS funds and say, right, okay, we're going to put X amount of it into um, you know, a hands-free project such as peer-to-peer -peer or something along, along those lines. And we're also looking to put a proportion of it into either a project that we're going to do or a commercial property that we're going to get uh, a return from as well. So we're going to touch on that because we thought it'd be really good rather than just have a, a webinar all about source capital and invest in your funds. You know, we've kind of talked a lot about that over the past few months. We thought it'd be good to give some ideas and tips and suggestions of ways that we find um, commercial properties or property projects to, to help people as well. So um, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. So my name is Stephen Moss. I'm the Managing Director of Source. Um, very, very fortunate to be in this uh, great position with a great company uh, and great people involved. So we've got um, a real variety of people starting in the property industry right through to experience uh, developing um, multiple units and, and some really, really good opportunities. Um, as a network, uh, we're over £270 million pounds worth of property, so um, it kind of gives you an insight in terms of where our business is. I personally have been in the property sector for uh, 20 years now, so I've had a, a lot of experience with different strategies, building, com uh, converting commercial units and residential units. Um, over the past sort of three, four years, I've started to get more involved with SAFs and um, that's when we were starting to build our capital side and the brand, um, kind of planting the seeds and looking at the, the elements of building a platform and, and what we need and the people to speak to and, and recruit. Um, so, yeah, so always been in, in the property sector. Um, absolutely love it. Property person through and through. So um, I thought it'd be good to use some of my experience to uh, feed back to our community and to yourselves on, you know, ways that we find property. Um, and please feel free to to add to it if you see anything. Um, in terms of the sourcing model, so uh, for anybody who's not aware, our business is um, split across, uh, across five uh, sections. We have source property, source capital, source developments, source care, and source franchise. So our source property is um, all about identifying opportunities, um, helping investors build portfolios. So some of the, the guys that are on this webinar, um, you can see a couple of names um, have utilized our network to find investment properties or commercial properties or projects um, and that's one of the things that we'll, we'll touch on shortly um, our capital side is our peer-to-peer -peer lending platform so if you are a SaaS investor um, and I can see a lot of the names uh, on this webinar uh, we've spoken to in terms of um, investing into our platform and investing into our projects and it's a nice um, way of having diversity across your portfolio to making sure that 
you're not just putting everything into one project, you, you're spreading that across different opportunities. Our developments, um, we've got some fantastic developments. Our flagship is Manchester, uh, 525 units um, on a development in Regent Plaza. Um, so over £270 million, pounds, uh, as I mentioned earlier, of developments across the UK. Um, our care section um, is still relatively new to us as a business in terms of um, we are working in the care industry, identifying opportunities, investments um, that we can build, convert or uh, refurbishment for the for the care industry um, and, and that's growing and growing really well and it's nice to see the the help and support that's given to, to people in different circumstances and then we have our franchise network as well so the franchise network um, we're going to touch on a little bit more detail about uh, that today because that's a great way of actually identifying the investment properties um, our network have uh, a lot of off-market and on-market opportunities both um, commercial, residential, developments, conversions. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to um, to touch base on that and find out um, you know, how we can help people and, uh, and identify those opportunities throughout the presentation as well. Feel free throughout the, the, uh, the webinar to ask any questions, any Q and A's, any opportunities at the end. Um, we'll have an opportunity at the end to touch on anything or, or go through anything as well. But, Throughout the presentation, if there's anything that you want a little bit more information on um, or you're unsure of or you've, you've had experience in, then please feel free to uh, to shout out and, and let us know because, um, you know, as a business, we've, you know, myself personally, I, I was sourcing property uh, as a property source for about nine years. Um, it, it's you, you never kind of stop sourcing property because you're always looking for larger developments or, or opportunities now that we can actually utilise and, and do ourselves. But it's always interesting to learn new ways that people do it um, and I'm sure some of the guys on this call have uh, got experience with it just looking at different ways that it can be can be done as well. I'm going to share some of the three top tips that we um, that I personally utilize when I'm looking at opportunities um, so it's a little bit later on in the presentation to hopefully give you guys um, ways to think about it. You may have seen one of our webinars last week um, which was done through our uh, network side of the business which was about analyzing deals and looking at deals um, and if you do have an opportunity you're looking at um, you know it'd be great to share it feel free to send some information over if, you, if you're looking for a second opinion or just somebody to bounce ideas off because that's a big part of what we do in terms of head office um, talking to franchisees about opportunities how to get the most from them how to um, you know structure them in the right way to make sure that they're as efficient as possible and we're getting the maximum GDP. First of all, we're going to touch on SaaS. So this isn't going to be a huge presentation about SaaS because the idea behind this really is to talk about the property sourcing and, and identifying properties that you can utilize it with your SaaS and in your SaaS. So, um, but I know there are a couple of new, newer people to SaaS, so I thought it'd be a nice opportunity just to touch on a couple of key points. Um, ways that you can use your SaaS. So you may have come across these terms before. So borrow, bridge, buy and bank um, four kind of keywords that people utilize when they're talking about the SaaS and when you actually break them down a little bit further in terms of what do they mean and, and how does that work um, you know from a bank point of view you can utilize your site that your SaaS as a bank so you can actually withdraw cash when you hit the age of 55 you can take away 25% tax free um, I don't know if we've got anybody on uh, the webinar who's who's utilized that yet or uh, had any experience but please feel free to shout out and uh, if you want to share your experience from one, I'm happy to, to take that on board as well. Borrow is quite a popular one. So you can actually use your SaaS monies to uh, to leverage up to 50% off um, and then use sort of senior debt uh, or bring in a lender um, to help you with that. Um, again, a really, really good way depending on what your strategy um, and what your plan is with your SaaS in terms of if you're looking for uh, very simply to buy a commercial unit and, and sit on that commercial unit, let the rent pay the mortgage off, then a lot of people use their SaaS in that way um, or it might be the building that you actually have your business in. Um, this is a way that you can actually structure your SaaS and as I said, when we came across SaaS initially, there were so many really good ways and opportunities um, I think having one presentation about it doesn't really do it full justice. Um, you can also bridge using your SaaS, so you can bridge money into your business or in platforms such as ourselves um, to generate a return. So 
Um, if you see a uh, opportunity that's got a good return, security there, and your trustee is comfortable with it, and there are ways that you can actually structure um, and bridge with that as well. And then buying and holding, so you know, purchasing commercial properties without using the leverage, you can obviously just purchase a property. It doesn't have to be commercial in terms of it can be a project. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's utilising your SaaS in that way and, and holding it so that um, so that you can uh, benefit from either you know the growth of the commercial unit, the rental income from the commercial unit, or it might be a case where you're purchasing the, the unit for uh, a change of planning or some kind of works in the future. So I'd say the main focus is looking at the SaaS uh, and looking at uh, finding and identifying properties we can use in it. Um, one of the most common questions we get uh, on here is, you know, can we use our SaaS to buy residential property? Um, I know there's one gentleman on this who will be smiling now uh, on this webinar, uh, Lyndon, because we, we discuss this all the time. Um, and, you know, a lot of the time, different trustees have different uh, opinions. Um, but yeah, we thought it'd be really good to put the statement there from HMRC regulation state that SaaS can only invest in or hold commercial property, cannot invest in or that or hold residential property. There are other ways that you can invest indirectly in residential property. So we utilize a way um, known as a trustee. So we actually, our, when we have investors invest and the property is either residential or it's going to be converted to residential, we have a trustee that will hold that property should they uh, take recovery of it so the SAS doesn't actually hold it. Um, there are other structures that you can use, but uh, we work with a number of SAS trustees and, and we haven't had any um, problems in that structure. Um, we have a couple of trustees that, that don't like it themselves, so we look at other ways we can utilise it there as well. So, But it's just interesting to look at because it's, it's a question that I'm sure um, you guys have come across. We get asked it all the time as well. Um, we do deal, deal with residential property, but we do have a structure in place um, to make sure that it's not held by the SAS. I thought it'd be really good as well to touch on, um, and one of the questions that we get asked quite a lot, we were asked this um, on a webinar we did uh, last year, you know, the typical buying process of uh, property with your SAS. Um, it's not too dis dis uh, similar when you look at the normal purchase of a property. I think one of the key differences is the actual learning and ed education part, because if you're going to operate a SAS and to get the most out of your SAS, it's important that you educate yourself about what you can do and what you can't do. Your trustee is there so that you can bounce ideas from or get approval if required, but it's really important that you, as the, uh, the owner of the SAS, um, also do some education and make sure you understand it. Sourcing is probably the, the, the most time consuming part of the actual process. So um, we've come across people that have been looking for the perfect opportunity for over two years. And during those two years, their SAS is actually decreasing in value rather than saying, right, okay, I'm going to put it into a project, make a return on it whilst I find that opportunity and whilst I actually utilize it in that way. And, and that's something we talk quite often to people about. And that's the, the area we're going to touch on today. Due diligence, so crunching the numbers, making sure it does work, making sure it fits in with the, um, the boundaries within the SAS, but also making sure it's going to give you the return you're expecting and it fits in with your strategy and plan that you're working towards. Financing, so obviously um, utilising, if you're going to utilise a lender or um, uh, a fund option, um, having that lined up to make sure that um, they can act quickly, um, you understand what the rules are, how they're going to work, and make sure it's all in place. Getting a risk valuation, <clears throat> it's probably the hardest part at the moment, to be completely honest. Um, obviously, with the lockdown, um, I'm sure, like, like uh, many other people in the property industry um, that might be on this, this webinar, um, you'll find that actually one of the reasons that the property housing market has slowed down so much or almost stopped in a lot of areas is simply because um, actually getting a valuation done is very, very difficult because RIC surveyors are, are on lockdown. Um, in areas that are not on lockdown, they're actually um, a little bit uncomfortable doing it while the housing market's changing. So um, it's probably one of the biggest challenges we have at the moment. And then obviously the completion, so you've got the exchange com and completion process. So a little bit of an overview really of the process. As I say, it's not too dissimilar to a standard process. It's just more about making sure you're educating yourself at the beginning. And if you are using a lender, 
making sure they're aware that it's SAS and making sure that it's um, it's compliant and fits in with what you're looking to achieve. So we've looked at the different ways you can use your SAS. We've not dealt into lots and lots of detail because that's not really the, the focus behind this. Um, you know, now looking at the easy part, which is um, anything but the easy part, finding the property, the project, or the commercial um, property. So um, I mentioned a moment ago about education. You know, for me, that is one of the key elements, is making sure that not just from a SAS and what you can do and what you can't do, but educating yourself as well about, you know, what are the options to find, what, what um, resources do you have in terms of, using technology, using sources, uh, using websites, but also as well, what sort of returns are you looking for? Um, what areas are you looking in? Uh, what's the longer term goal? Is it a case of you're looking for something with a good yield now, or you're looking for longer term growth? And it's measuring all that up and, and kind of creating yourself a plan to make sure that that fits and that works. As a business, um, you know, we've, you can actually see in the picture top right, Chris. So Chris is our property training development director. So Chris works with our, our franchisees and our network in terms of helping them um, and supporting them identify opportunities. Um, we also run training days. So as a business, we, you know, the, the idea of this webinar isn't to sell training days. We don't have a function like that where you simply play to come on a training day. But um, this is to kind of show what resources go in to helping people identify um, and finding the best property opportunities um, because it's not it's not as simple as going on a two day course, going out, getting on the right move, finding a property, and then trying to sell it to an investor. Um, and if you're going to use sources, that's what you need to be aware of. There are a lot of people that will do a very quick course and try and find and package a property to get a fee. Whereas really, it takes time, it takes people um, experience, it takes um, you know you've got to go through a, a certain level of due diligence. We've had webinars in the past where we've talked about the different levels of due diligence particularly on our capital side where you know, we, we've, level, we, we've got to level sort of bank grade due diligence on that. Um, and, and that's a separate webinar. We've, we've got a link at the, uh, the end of this so you could always watch the video and, and we'll talk about the due diligence that we do there as well. Um, so yeah, so this is a little bit of an overview of our training schedule. We, we do 73 training days throughout the year. Obviously at the moment we're, we're a little bit disrupted, but uh, we're trying to do as much virtually as we can. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of effort and a lot of time that goes into looking at the different courses, looking at the different strategies and how we can help you identify those investment properties. What I've done now is look at, um, for, this, for, for this webinar, is look at the kind of two um, key splits of sourcing property. So rather than me sit here and say, right, okay, um, we're going to compact 73 days of training and sourcing and property understanding into the next 40 minutes you know we're not we're really looking at okay look some of the key ways that we do is some of the tricks some of the tips you know and what i've done is split it into offline and online because for us it really depends on what time you've got to put into this so if you're busy and you've got a normal day job and you've got a SAS sat there that you'd like to get a property into that or you'd like to find a project to go into that you will have to get dedicate some time but you might find that you can only utilize time in the evening. So online strategies uh, and ideas are the best ones for you because you can do them in the evening. Likewise, if you've got a little bit more time, a little bit more flexibility, you might find that you get a little bit more success with offline because not as many people are able to put the time and energy into doing that. So we're going to look at online first. Um, and one of the things that we, we talk to people about is, you know, starting off at the very basics, you know, 95% of property is sold through an agent. So it makes sense, and, and I see a lot of training courses, I see a lot of webinars where people talk about going direct to seller and direct to vendor to get the best deals, and, and not just the best deals, but you know, um, that you'll never buy a good deal from an agent and, and silly terms like that. You know, we, we find that a lot of properties we do buy through agents. We build relationships with agents. We make them aware that what resources, what funds we have in place. And I'd say that's one error that a lot of people would SAS don't utilize you know SaaS can be classed as almost a cash buyer in a lot of respects and it's putting that forward to the um to the agents make sure that they know what position you're in and, and putting your best foot forward and what we've done here is we've put a list together of the 26 um portals that we recommend with commercial property um, and we're kind of focusing more on commercial property today because 
Um, commercial property can be bought in the SAS and held in the SAS, but also a lot of commercial property can be de developed um, and it can mean things like conversions or land, etc. So the reason that we touch on these 26 as well is that quite often, um, and why it's such a, a relatively high number, we don't just rely on one or two. Quite often, particularly with commercial, you'll find a lot of um, portals will class themselves as a national portal or, you know, they cover the whole of the UK. And when you actually drill down into them, you'll often find that actually they're stronger in certain regions than other regions. And if you go onto a different platform, you'll find in that, that platform will be stronger in other regions. So my suggestion is based on where you are in the UK, is have a flick through each one of these portals, do some searches in your kind of key gold mine area, um, the area you'd like to buy. And, and some people with SAS will buy anywhere in the UK, which is absolutely fine. But you know, just do some research through these portals. You might find some of the portals have multiple listings, um, but yeah, quite often um, we find that these uh, the more sort of regional based, and we get better stuff from that. We also find as well with commercial units, um, it's working looking for surveyors that have their own or have properties listed. So um, quite often you'll find that somebody will have a commercial unit, they'll have a surveyor come out and value it, and they'll say to the surveyor, you know, I'm thinking about selling, I'm looking to sell it. And that surveyor will just say, well, we'll, we'll list it on our website. Quite often, on a number of projects that we've done, those, those we've, we've spoken to the surveyor and that, that property's been on there for eight months, 12 months. They don't upload to Rightmove, they don't upload to Zoopla or anything else, it's just sat on their website. So it's a really good opportunity to then go in and say, right, okay, can we meet the owner? Can we sit down and, and see what we can put together? Because A, it's gone a little bit stale, it's been on there for a while. Um, and B, you know, you can move fairly quickly given that, that it's the SAS as well. So that, that's sort of some of the key areas that I would recommend um, and starting with online, looking at these 26 uh, portals, you can um, set up alerts, et cetera, on them as well. So if you know what type of property you're looking for, they will help. Um, but again, personally, if you have a, a territory that you're interested in, I would spend time looking at that territory and looking for local surveyors or architects they also list properties on their website because you'll find that they don't promote them anywhere else. So you're going to get some really good stuff there as well. Some of the things, you know, right move is obviously the largest website in the UK. Um, commercial, it might not be the biggest, but there's still some good things on there. Um, a lot of, a lot of people, when we speak to them about property sourcing, um, a, a response can often be that, well, we'll just go on right move and scroll through ourselves and find something that yields 8%. That for us isn't really property sourcing, and we'll touch on that a little bit more, but it, it, it's also wasting huge amounts of time because I've been there and done that myself where I've sat on right move, scroll through, scroll through, and because you get that bored of scrolling through, you miss things, you see opportunities, you, you kind of don't look at, around those and what you can do with them. So one of the things that we utilize when we talk to people about is using keyword searches. So on the likes of right move and Zoopla, you can actually put keywords in. So if you're looking at, um, if you set your search um, to a particular type and then you, you know, of commercial and type in flats, you'll, bring, you'll be brought up a list of uh, commercial units that have flats either built in or potential for flats. And then that's an opportunity then to say, right, okay, um, can we split the title on this? Can we raise the value or increase the value on this property? Um, can we also set up daily alerts so properties like this then come through automatically rather than me having to go through every single website to find out where the best opportunities are. Um, so that's, that's one of the quicker ways that I would recommend uh, people jumping in and, uh, and having a look at that. Setting those keywords, particularly on the 26, and certainly looking for local um, architects or surveyors that, that just list stuff on their local uh, website. Another tool as well that we use for online searching is landinsight.io. Um, it's a, a really, really good tool in terms of functionality. Um, it gives you information about the freeholders, addresses, um, often contact details. It also generates leads for planning leads. And um, you can see here a planning search for leads uh, in a particular area at Warrington. So it kind of gives you an overview. You can zoom in and get a lot more detailed data. Uh, there is a free trial you can get with this. We're, we're not associated with them. It's just a way that we utilize it. So looking at technology. One of the reasons as well I've actually put this into the presentation is not just looking at the, the technology and not just looking at um, you know sourcing, but also 
I think it's really important to take, looking at taking advantage of the market given the circumstances we're in right now. So there are companies like Debenhams and there, there are a lot, lot more that are either in financial trouble or um, are actually, you know, gone into administration. Um, and I, I know people that will go onto Companies House, get a list of all the branches and then utilise tools like Insight to confirm then out of that address who the freeholder is. And they'll start typically a double conversation. They'll start a conversation with the freeholder about buying the property. But they'll also contact Debenhams or the administrator as well about doing the same thing because potentially you can get a better deal going that way or you know it, it could work either way. So um, they'll always spark up a conversation with both. They'll utilize this, um, utilizing technology like Landing Site that will give you the information of who owns the freehold and the situation that these guys are in. But this is just using one example. And obviously, in the current climate, I know it's not particularly nice, but in reality, to give yourself a head start, um, the cheaper you can get the property, um, the better. And obviously, uh, the better return you're going to get on it overall as well. So this is definitely a way I'd say take advantage uh, and use the technology like Landing Site. And have utilized the free trial. I think it's seven days. Um, lots and lots of information on there. But use, it, it's presenting in a really user-friendly way. Um, and it's great for sort of commercial land projects um, when you're looking for freeholders or you're looking at shop units that you can target um, and contact the actual owner of the, the property as well. Another online one as well um, is your local council brownfield sites. So there's actual register. So if you Google this, you'll find your local uh, register and you can then actually find out, right, okay. Um, again, using tools then to say, right, okay, uh, this is a brownfield site. Do the council own it or is it owned privately? You can check that on Land Insight. You know, how close is that to Greenfield? What, what are the boundaries? Is there any other development that's happened there? This is typically a longer term, you know, investment or a longer term option. Um, you know, and I think it's really important when you're looking at things like this that A, you have time to put into it, which not all SaaS investors have. I appreciate that. Or you utilize the experience of somebody that does. So you look at bringing on a planning specialist or, you know, an architect to make sure that you're getting the absolute most from this um, rather than just delving in and, and buying it because it's next to Greenfield or it's potentially it's surrounded by houses. It's making sure you use those uh, the experience of the people there. So it's really useful in terms of sourcing property because it's a register. There's lots of information on there. You can uh, then take that information and put it into tools like Land Insight uh, and gather a bit more information there as well. So I would definitely recommend looking at this uh, and seeing what sort of brownfield sites are in and around your area that can potentially be purchased. We're also going to look at some offline solutions. So um, how can you source properties using offline? The most common way and probably the most popular is property sources. You know, people, if you're new to this and you're unaware of that, people who, uh, property sources are people who make a living from sourcing quality investment opportunities. The way that we talk to our franchisees and, our, and you know, the way we'll source property, it's about finding an opportunity that value can be added for the investor. It's not a case of just simply looking online and saying, right, okay, there's a two-bed terrace where you can get an 8% return. For us, anybody can do that. For me, we'll look at things like, you know, can we get it cheap enough that the yield is a lot higher than the average in the area? Can uh, the property be converted? Can the property be improved? Can it be extended? You know, what can we offer this investor so they have added, added value, basically, when they're buying a property from us? You will pay a fee for this. Our fee as a business is typically 2%, but it can vary depending on what the opportunity is. Um, and, you know, it, it ranges typically across the UK. Um, but, yeah, we, we um, as a business, it's, um, it's a really good service for people who don't have the experience or don't have the time. Or even if they are actively looking, it's just another way to say, you know, I've met people in the past that are property sourcing themselves for their own investments and won't use a sourcer because they don't want to pay a fee. Well, for me, the fee is only payable on exchange if you're happy with that property. And a property, bring, property sourcer brings you a property that you haven't found or you haven't seen, utilizing their network or their connections or their experience. And, and bear in mind, they generally do this full time, then it's worth paying that fee. If you build that into the costs and you're still getting a great return, it's definitely worth uh, utilizing. As a business, our franchise network, um, I'm the UK's largest uh, network of property sources, investment specialists. 
It's also worth commenting on as well about making sure that they are um, all registered um, in the correct manner. So, um, you know, make sure they've got everything in place, the procedures in place, systems in place, that the property opportunity is going to be seen right the way through the process um, and dealt with properly. Um, we have over 70 offices across the UK, so we've got a really good coverage. So it might be you might be in a situation where you are looking to buy a property for your SaaS, but you haven't decided either where that property is going to be, um, or you, you're quite open to what type of property it is. Um, and it's good then to bounce it off different people and different uh, in different areas because you get a really good feel for what's happening, what they're expecting to happen, uh, and how things change as well. One of the services that we offer, so if you actually visit our website, source.co, it's just CO at the end, um, you'll see the different areas of our business. Um, if you click on the property one, um, you'll see that we have a service called Source to Order. And our Source to Order is basically um, a more detailed breakdown of actually what are you looking for, how does it work, um, and then we then contact you to say, right, okay, we've got your Source to Order. We ask for a £250 um, fee on account, and, and it can be refunded to you in full. But it's really a sign of commitment to say that, look, I am serious about buying a property. I'm only going to buy one. Um, I'm only going to pay your fee on exchange, so I have to be happy with the property. But it's, uh, it's a great way to, uh, to get a small army of property sources um, that are experienced, have a great network looking for you and uh, finding those opportunities. So that service is called Source to Order. It's definitely worth having a look at uh, and seeing if you can utilise it for your SaaS as well. Uh, another offline one, um, I think it's being used more at the moment as a online, but yeah, typically offline. So we have um, networking events, so quite specific. So Sourced Investor Network, um, so we run our own SIN events. You have PIN, um, which are one of the largest, and Progressive as well. So. Um, again, it's looking in the territories that you want to buy, what events are being held. Now, I know a lot of SaaS people don't particularly like going to these events because they kind of feel like they're going to get mugged um, because they turn up saying we've got a SaaS and we're looking for an investment. And then suddenly you've got a line of 200 people in front of you trying to sell you in picture. Um, so I think it's just about your approach. Um, a lot of people that I talk to, and what I would suggest is look, go along to these events. You don't have to declare exactly what you're looking for um, when you have your sort of 30 seconds stand up and, and announce it. You can be a bit more savvy and say, I'm, you're new to it, I'm just looking at what's around, et cetera, et cetera. Typically by networking that way, you'll meet people that you feel more comfortable doing business with, uh, and sit down and have a better conversation and start opening up a little bit more. But really good events and if you're not comfortable going to sort of networking events probably now is the best time to take advantage of the virtual um networking events because it's a, a great way that you can actually sit at home feel comfortable in your own um own location and uh, just openly speak to people about this is what i'm looking for or has anybody got these types of properties or these types of opportunities and quite often you'll find people will say yeah and then it's a case of you need to to follow your due diligence and do, and do that through so uh, have a look online, any opportunities and, and uh, the virtual events because it's a good chance to take advantage of them. Another one as well um, is uh, auctions. So utilising auctions and for, for me and from my experience in auctions, often the market, the, the auction market fluctuates quite a lot in terms of you can often find that you can go to auctions um, and a property that you've done your research on, you've looked at, you feel is worth £150,000, not a penny more. It can go for £180,000. So really hit and miss, but there are still some good opportunities there that you can pick up, um, particularly properties that don't sell at auction. So there's something a little bit wrong with it. We've got one at the moment that one of our franchisees is dealing with where um, it's got uh, an issue with a, a lease. So by spending that a little bit more time on it, it didn't sell at the auction because of the lease. So now the seller's willing to talk a bit more detail about, about it to us willing to give us a little bit more time a little bit more flexibility so therefore potentially we can get a really really good property um by following that through there's a good um app and website that i uh, looked at not long ago i think it was eg um eg property um, there was at the property show that we go to in london excel um, and they have uh, an app where it kind of shows you an alert you to um, auctions or properties that haven't sold at auction so I'll get the link for that and I'll put it into this uh, when we send it out to people as well. So um, if anybody's got any questions or queries about that, 
please feel uh, feel free to fire them over. So yeah, auctions are a good one. Again, given the current climate that we're in, you are finding that more auctions are being done um, online, just simply so that they can try and continue moving the market. So some of the key ones to look for are um, you know, property auction or auction network. Uh, another one that's that's very well known for online is I Am Sold. Um, I Am Sold have thousands across the UK. Um, so it's a great brand to log on to. You can watch them online, you can make your bids, uh, and you can follow the process right the way through there. So I definitely suggest uh, having a look at uh, I Am Sold and what, what opportunities they've got available as well. Another one for offline is targeting. So um, not just using the tools such as um, a landing site, but also just targeting properties that you know you might have seen yourself. Um, it might be a pub that's closing, or it might be um, you know a building that you've seen half empty or up for rent, and then getting letters, dropping leaflets, or something along that in there to say, you know, we're looking uh, for properties like this. It's half empty, or you know, particularly offices. There's a lot of empty offices um, which are a little bit older and a little bit more run down. Their idea of kind of taking, taking, sprucing up, converting. Um, we've done some ourselves where the buildings have been sort of 1970, haven't looked that attractive. Um, but when we've converted them to apartments, put new fascias on, um, new gutters, uh, and some uh, some covering, you know, we've changed the whole uh, front of the building and it looks absolutely amazing. So it's just by applying a little bit more. And I suppose that follows on to one of our tips, really, which I'm going to touch on shortly. But yeah, looking at things um, outside. So, so yeah, targeted on on uh, particular properties. So if you've seen something, or you know, quite often we meet uh, people that are looking to join our network, and um, the, when we're talking about uh, and getting to know each other a bit better, we'll talk about opportunities, and it'll always be yeah, we're actually I drove past this, or I drive past this pub every day, and it's short, or I drive past this, and it's just literally having either a leaflet or business card or letter sat in your car. So you can just jump out, jump out, run over, and say, "Look, if, you know, can you pass this to the owner, or is the owner here? Can I have a quick word with them?" And then just building that relationship, find out what's going on with it, and taking advantage of it there to utilise. So some of my personal top tips. So I've wrote down three tips that I would use uh, when sourcing uh, for uh, properties, and I kind of applied them to some of the properties that we've we're dealing with or we've done. Um, so. Uh, the first one I would say is thinking outside the box. Um, I think this is probably one of the hardest things uh, for a lot of people. So this property was on the market for almost 12 months. Um, you can see from the front there, it doesn't look massive. Um, doesn't look anything special. Um, but actually, once you've got inside, it's a huge property. It's got lovely parking and trees, etc. garden around the side. Um, it, was, it was an old manor uh, house for, the, for Bournemouth. So the history of it, the position of it, um, it all starts opening up and it, it kind of been left there. This this is a, another really good example of a local architect um, who had their own website selling a couple of properties for um, clients um, and it had been sat there for such a long time because it wasn't advertised nationally. There wasn't anything uh, going on with it seriously. You know, we've come along and we've managed to get it secured. We've funded it and obviously we're now converting it, which is uh, it, it's a really, really good project. So. For us, um, you know, we're we're always looking at things that we can think outside the box. So it's not just a case of looking at like a simple refurb and thinking, right, okay, it doesn't work. Look at look at a property and think, okay, what else can I do to improve it? Or is there anything else? Have I maxed out this opportunity? Uh, or other things that I can bounce bounce around as well. Don't overthink. I think it's one of the biggest things. Um, not not just with SaaS investors. I think that's wrong to say, but with investors generally, um, you know, they'll see an opportunity inside, deep down inside, they think it's a good opportunity or they know it's a good opportunity, but they, you know, procrastinate, that's the word. Uh, it's just got out of my head then. Um, so, yeah, they'll overthink the situation. They'll either redo the numbers 400 times, um, ask somebody from the local pub, you know, or something along those lines. And I think it's important to actually act on things, you know, you can do a lot of um, research and due diligence without spending lots and lots of money. And it's a case of ticking those bits off your list to make sure you've done your research, you've done your due diligence. Because what should happen in theory then is the surveyor, the QS and the builder should all confirm your research that you've done and your due diligence that you've done by saying, yes, the property is valued at this. Yes, the works are going to cost this. And yes, the timescale is this. So by doing that and doing your due diligence properly, 
you're going to get the all clear, you're going to get the confirmation from the professionals and the people that are insured to do their job. Um, so it's a case of actually pushing yourself a little bit more. Don't overthink it. These guys um, jumped into this opportunity. They found this joining training week on our uh, sourcing uh, training um, and they've converted it into nine apartments. So, you know, a lot of people would still have been sat there thinking, you know, is it too big or, you know, are we doing the right thing? What can we do here? What could, you know, lots and lots of uh, different um, thoughts that I suppose can be, can be uh, overthought, but no, it is really important to sometimes bite the bullet. I think that's the big, uh, the big point. Make sure you do your due diligence properly, but then bite the bullet because if you don't, somebody else will beat you to it. The other um, tip I'd say as well is, you know, be willing to adapt. So this is one of our franchisees, um, Dean, who found an opportunity, um, and it was a, it was a re, refurbishment opportunity. Um, and I think the Dean was looking for refurbs or conversions, but it didn't quite fit into a standard refurb because if you add into account uh, monies for um, finance stamp duty, you know it doesn't it didn't work then. So you know, by being, uh, again, thinking outside the box, but also adapting her strategy and saying, okay, let's do it as a JV or an assisted sale with the uh, the sellers. We're able to do the works, save the monies from buying it from the purchase cost, finance, um, and the, um, the stamp duty. Um, that way then it actually generated a very good profit. Um, and it meant that she can go on to do other projects and other things. So, uh, make sure that you know you don't just stick to one project, one type of strategy. Have in mind that there are other strategies around, and as long as they all kind of fit in your plan, that's the main thing that you want to do. Make sure if they don't as well. What you might find, and we find this quite often, is that while you're looking for an opportunity, you might find that well, this opportunity doesn't fit in with my plan, but still works. It's still uh, a good opportunity. Introduce it to somebody else and then get an, uh, a you know a property sourcing fee. From the back of that because that's how a lot of property sources work property sources are looking for opportunities for themselves they'll find good opportunities but it doesn't fit with what they're looking for so therefore that's how they sell them and, and generate a good fee from that as well so they're my top three tips that i would say um, make sure that you're um, you don't overthink things you act quickly um, make sure that you um, look at um, looking outside the box thinking outside the box um, and you know, be willing to adapt. Um, it might be a case of being willing to adapt because of the, the market and the situation. I'm sure a lot of people, um, could, you know, sat on this webinar as well, had a an idea where you know you may have been looking for a commercial long-term blue chip um, tenant to sit in your SaaS, but now actually you're looking and thinking, well, um, you know, there are going to be opportunities in this market. You know, we've certainly changed our strategy over the last few weeks in terms of saying, okay. We've been doing a lot of conversions and new build. Well, actually, we know if you if you look at companies like Blackstone, so Blackstone are one of the biggest investment companies in the world. Um, they've just raised the fund of £10 million because they know that over the next couple of months, there are going to be an awful lot of property um, opportunities, discounted rates for them to buy. And that's exactly what they did in 2008. So we're the same. We're looking at putting funds together um, utilizing SaaS and investments and ISAs, etc., so that we can act quickly on property opportunities that are coming in cheaper than what they normally would and take advantage of the situation. Um, so, yeah, so moving on, uh, what happens when you find a deal? So, I'm not going to go into lots and lots of uh, detail in terms of the, you know, what we do. We typically teach these six steps to our, our network and our franchisees. So, we research. We source, we crunch the numbers, we secure it, we structure it, and we package it. So that's the, the kind of flow that our our training follows for any strategy. We're not just, um, you know, we don't we don't just have one flow and that's it. We look at how each one of these changes differently for each strategy, but predominantly this is the flow we take and what we've done to help anybody. You know, when you do find a good opportunity, we've actually recorded a film. If you if you subscribe onto our YouTube channel, sourced. Um, you'll find that we've got videos on there teaching you about due diligence, what to do, what to follow, uh, red flags, the numbers, um, and looking at you know how you can work out the returns and break it all down as well. So I wanted to add that in there really to help anybody that's either found an opportunity or thinking, okay, what do we do with the next step once you've got that, the due diligence side? Because that, that is a bit really where you can make or break a deal. So it's important that you understand that and digest that. But 
for this presentation, it's more along the lines of we wanted to look at um, sourcing properties and, and the opportunities as well. We do have lots of resources on our website. So um, sourcecapital.co forward slash resources. We've got um, SaaS brochures, etc. If it's property sourcing, if you go onto our source.co website and follow the property link, you'll find lots of resources. Um, we've got loads of training videos on there as well. So if you're looking to get into a new strategy, um, there are videos that you can sit there and watch and it'll teach you everything about the strategy. It'll teach you what to avoid, um, tips, help, etc., etc., and resources. So really, really good, uh, useful points there. If anybody's got any questions, I'm happy to um, answer any questions, queries that anybody might have, if anybody's got any. Oh, yeah, we've got one question just popped up, so. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I'm just getting these questions. Bear me one second. That's not really a question, unless someone's typed in to buy. Oh, sorry, right, okay. Can I invest some of my SaaS into my project, but also one of your projects? Yeah, absolutely. And as I said at the very beginning, that's what a lot of um, investors typically do. So um, if you came to us with your full SaaS part and said, I'd like to put all this into one, one particular project, and it was your whole SaaS part, you know, we would talk to you really about what you need to look at um, diversifying. If you're looking for hands-free returns, great, but put it across a number of different projects. Uh, and John and the team would talk to you in a lot, lot more depth about this. But yeah, predominantly, predominantly a lot of the time, to be honest, people don't have many options but do something like this because if you find a project that you're looking for, so let's say your SaaS pot is um, £300,000 for argument's sake, you find a project, um, you don't leverage it, it's a refurb, you're going to put a little bit of money into refurbing it, you generally find that you're left with, uh, let's say, £50,000 in your pot and it's not enough to buy another property. It's not enough to do something else that you want to do. So people will then utilize that uh, to go into an investment like ourselves, the peer-to-peer -peer lending platform, so that you get first charge security uh, and a fixed return as well over a 6, 12, 18 month period, wh whatever the particular project is at the time. But yeah, that, to answer your question, I mean, yeah, that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people will split it and keep it diverse. Another question just come in. So I work full time. Do you think I've got time to find my own projects as well as working? You can do it, and a lot of people do. You know, um, I was seeing with a gentleman who's, um, he works full time, he's a very, very busy chap. Um, his, his job's actually overseas, so he's, he's always back at two, back at two, and he's just bought a number of commercial units himself. Um, so, you know, it is possible. Um, I think what you generally find is that it, it's people, um, what stops a lot of people is the, is the kind of confidence really more than anything else because a lot of people will think, well, okay, have I done all the due diligence properly? Have I done this? Or because they're busy and working full time, they don't feel like they've given enough attention. Um, you know, whereas um, really that's what we can do for you. So either on one arm, we can either source the property and find the property for you, present it to you with the returns um, and what we would do with it as a project. Um, or alternatively, we have the peer-to-peer -peer platform where, you know, we take it a little, little step further, I suppose, in terms of we find the project, we do all the due diligence for it. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we class that as bank grade because the, the level of in-depth due diligence we go to is, is unbelievable. Uh, but secondly, as well, um, you know, we're also covered by the FCA and um, you have first charge security on the property. So, it really depends on your situation. Um, quite often we do meet people, as I mentioned earlier, that have had the SASs for two years and just not invested in anything because they're still looking for the perfect project while working full time. So it is important to really make sure you utilize it as much as you can, even if it's small parts, just to get a return on it to A, cover your fees, but also start getting your money to, to earn money. And you know that's, that's really important as well. Um, another question that's just popped up, the minimum you can invest. So, yeah, minimum investment really, um, you know, from our peer-to-peer -peer side is £250, so it's very, very small, but from, you know, a, a purchase and own, um, it, it depends on whether you're going to leverage it and whether, you know, we talked at the beginning about um, you can you can actually leverage 50% of your SaaS, so that might be an option depending on the size of your SaaS, but yeah, in terms of the peer-to-peer -peer platform, that's uh, £250. Um, we have um, projects, uh, so the next question about the projects, um, 
We do have properties to purchase live on our website but in terms of our peer-to-peer -peer projects. Um, we've got um, some auto-invest projects which we're going live uh, next week. Um, so yeah, so if anybody's interested, please make sure you've registered. You can register for free and then you'll get alerts on those projects um, on the peer-to-peer -peer side of it as well. Fantastic. Any more questions, anybody? No, we all questioned out. Brilliant. Well, I just again want to thank everybody for the time. I hope you've learned something uh, that will help you identify uh, an investment property or property for your SaaS. If you do have any questions or queries, um, I will go on to oh, we'll go on to the next slide, which will give you our contact details as well. Just bear me on a second, guys. Sorry, something's just popped up. So yeah, if you do have any questions, um, even if you just want to contact our capital team. And if it's not about the peer-to-peer, -peer, if it's about buying a property, then you know, we'll pass you over to the relevant people, um, whether it's our network. Um, if you are looking for an investment property to purchase, my recommendation, again, is to look at the source to order because it's a great tool to use. Um, yeah, oh, no, thanks, Andrew. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. And, uh, yeah, if you do need get any questions, queries, please feel free to contact us and... Uh, Oh, one question is just coming from Marty. So do you offer Lend and Learn? Yeah, Marty, um, in honesty, most of our projects are Lend and Learn. So in terms of we have open days, uh, we have uh, calls about them, we've got networking. We do lots and lots of interactive stuff with our projects as well. So um, we were in Bournemouth, which is our um, our latest one we just showed you there um, a couple of slides ago. So we were in there about um, two weeks before a bit more three weeks before the coronavirus started where we had investors coming around and seeing the building seeing what the plans were meeting some of the team that were involved um, and getting to see and understand exactly what the process is um, so yeah hopefully that gives you a, a bit of an insight but yeah if you're looking to actually develop something yourself and you, you've not done one yet then this is a great way to invest into something um, and actually be part of uh, be part of it as well because coming to visit and, and doing bits like that which is really really cool um, Brilliant. Thanks for all the great messages, guys. Have a lovely day. Enjoy the sun and uh, do stay safe. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.